Chapter 9. Mazen. The night after the run-in with the jinn, the sultan hosted an impromptu feast to which he invited various court politicians. The palace diwan was decorated in rich reds and golds, and made ready for fifty guests. The best dancers and musicians were called to perform, and delicacies from all over the sultanate were prepared. It was an extravagant celebration. All the guests were clearly enjoying themselves, except for Mazen, who was miserable. He'd promised to be at Dalia bin Adnan's tavern tonight, and yet here he was, mingling with people wearing fake smiles. It was an effort to keep his own false smile affixed when, on the inside, he was screaming. Gatherings in the Durwan were always a grand affair, but tonight's celebration was even more of a show. Because no royal gathering was complete without gifts, some of the invited politicians had decided to compete with each other by bringing expensive offerings. The sultan, naturally, had displayed them to show his appreciation. The cluster of flower-shaped lanterns hanging over Mazen's head was new, as were the gem-embedded brocade curtains framing the windows. An enormous glass plaque featuring spiraling golden lines a, the guest had claimed was a depiction of the royal courtyard hung behind the half-stage, and small but intricate tapestries with the sultan's legacy written on them had been hung on the walls. Even just gazing upon the lavish gifts made Mazen tired. He glanced sullenly down at his plate, which was piled high with lamb and fatouche and tabouille. He had barely touched his food. He was too busy mulling over the engagement he was missing. Restless, he looked past the crowds gathered at the low-rising table and to the window. The courtyard seemed to glow, the white roses sparkling beneath the moonlight. Like gin blood, he thought dully. But, of course, the courtyard would sparkle like gin blood. It had sprung from it. He turned away, nauseated. How many gin had been bled out on this once barren soil so that they could live this life of luxury? Though Mazen did not have any memories of his father's victims, he was still overwhelmed with guilt when he took part in indulgent celebrations like this. It was hard not to think of all the lives lost in the garden, of the jinn who had been slaughtered by his brother, and of the women his father had killed. Murderers, both of them, and family, he reminded himself dutifully with a heavy heart. He realized Hakim was staring at him from the other side of the table, brows lowered. Are you all right? the look said. Mazen responded with what he hoped was a reassuring smile. Hakim did not look convinced. But before he could voice his concerns, he was pulled into conversation by one of the sultan's counselors, a kindly man who always complimented Hakim on his maps. He was one of the only court officials who treated Hakim with respect. Only a few spaces down, the head of the council, the sultan's ancient-looking wazir, sat watching the conversation with blatant displeasure. Mazen did not like the man, but then, he did not like many of the counselors. He was glad his interactions with them were mostly limited to these gatherings. He was uninterested in eavesdropping on Hakim's conversation, and was relieved when a distraction presented itself. The lanterns above them dimmed, and he turned his attention to a pair of performers mounting the stage with flaming swords. Golden coins and trinkets hung from their silk clothing, winking like stars, as they ascended the darkened stairs. They were a captivating sight, and yet Mazen found his eyes wandering unbidden to the jagged shadows they cast. His stomach nodded with nerves. You are safe. The jinn would never come here. He had tried to reassure himself of this last night as well, but to no avail. He barely slept for fear that the shadows in his room would choke him when he closed his eyes. Why the long face, Aki? I thought you enjoyed decadent celebrations. Mazen startled as Omar slid onto the recently vacated cushion behind, beside him. Could you perhaps have had other plans? He leaned forward. Maybe you were thinking of going to a certain tavern to see a certain storyteller? Mazen's mouth went dry. He had not brought up his plan to anyone, not even Hakim. So Omar could not have known unless... How long have you been spying on me? I have better things to do with my time than spy on you. You simply underestimate the skill of the ears I have in the sook. Omar paused to watch the female performer twirl a flaming sword above her head. Honestly, it is a good thing you're not at the tavern tonight. Father has already set his plan in action, after all. 
Mazen stopped mindlessly poking at his fatouche and looked up. Plan? His plan to find the midnight merchant. When Mazen simply stared at him, Omar smiled and said, The Sultan has learned from an invaluable source that there is a secret entrance to the illegal underground market in Dalia bin Adnan's tavern. The midnight merchant will be there. A secret entrance? Did old Ruba know about this? Did Layla? These were questions he couldn't ask Omar, wouldn't ask Omar. What does father plan on doing? He asked instead. Omar raised a brow. Worried for your woman, are you? She's not my woman. Too late, Mazen realized his mistake. Omar chuckled. Ah, so you did go out to see her? I didn't. The stage, wrapped in so many shadows, began to blur. Mazen felt his eyelids droop, his shoulders slouch. He reached for the threads of his consciousness, only for them to snap beneath his fingers. The present faded. There was just darkness, ruby-red eyes, a soft, lulling voice. I would chase you to the ends of the world if that were what it took. You look a little flushed, Aki. Omar's voice was strangely distant. Have you had too much wine? Mazen gripped the edges of the table. He was vaguely aware of how warm his fingers, his iron rings were. The world became a haze of muted color. Could it be that you're angry at me? What have I done to deserve your ire? Mazen did not want to be terrified of his brother, but how could he not be? His brother was a cold-blooded murderer. He had killed Jin and killed her lover. He was a monster, and she wanted nothing more than to gouge out his eyes, and... Mazen blinked. His mind was... foggy. Ah, I know why you are mad. You are frustrated by your incompetence. Omar was looking right at him, expression solemn. Mazen was overcome with the sudden violent urge to attack him. You're a coward, Omar continued. You are too scared to speak your mind, so you hide in shadows. You bottle up your anger and let it consume you. Mazen glanced at Omar's shadow. It was a good shadow, he thought. Much better than its owner. He glanced at his own shadow, which inexplicably had eyes, slits of pale moonlight. Omar was still talking. So, what will you do? Mazen thought of his father and his curfews, of Layla and the shadow jinn, and of Hunter stabbing her beloved over and over again. When he was done, he turned to her and said, I never knew jinn were such cowards. He laughed as she struggled against the iron chains he had used to bind her. Tears clouded her eyes as she looked at the vibrant green space where her husband's body had been. I will find you, Hunter, she thought even if it takes me years, even if I have to cross the whole damned world. She had never been so certain of anything in her life. Ah, Omar said. His voice sounded as if it were coming from the depths of the ocean. I had my suspicions, but it seems you really were hiding in my brother's shadow. Distantly, Mazen was aware of his legs shifting, his heart pounding, his head throbbing. But he observed these things from a distance. His body was numb, all senses dulled except for his sight. And then, even his vision blurred, and all he saw was Omar. Omar looking at him with murder in his eyes. Omar gripping a knife he'd slip, slid out from his sleeve. Mazen smiled a smile that was not his. I promised I would find you, murderer. Everything that happened next was a shade darker than his worst nightmare. His vision expanded until he was looking at the whole Dewan. He had not one eye, but many, all of them hidden in the darkness around him. His ring fingers were suddenly cold, but every other part of his body was unbearably hot, as if fire had ran through his veins. Someone was saying his name, Mazen, 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 but he did not respond, could not respond. He lifted a heavy hand and called the shadows to him. They sighed and hissed as they stretched toward him, blotting out moonlight, devouring flame, and cackling with pleasure as the humans began to scream. Mazen turned to Omar and smiled. I have won, he thought. Even a heartless hunter would not attack his own brother. Mazen flicked his wrist, and the nearest shadow shoved Omar to his knees, grabbed his knife, and held it to his throat. Even then, the hunter had the audacity to laugh. You would go so far as to possess my brother for revenge, Jin. You truly are a coward. 
Mazin's rage was a tangible thing. It made even his shadows quiver with fear. A coward that will have her revenge, he said softly. Goodbye, hunter. He snapped his fingers, and the shadows lunged.